My name is Peter Bruninger and I'm in the Prana Fidelity Room and I'm here with Steve Norber. Good morning, Steve. How are you? Good morning, Peter. I'm doing well, thanks. Steve, this is the? The Model 5090 loudspeaker. So it's a two-way using uh, dual six-inch drivers and a 30 millimeter tweeter. It's a minimum phase crossover that is, um, it also has what, it, what we have is the tuning circuit so I can adjust the roll off of the tweeter mm -hmm. between 16 kilohertz and 20 kilohertz, it can either be flat mm -hmm. or a 2 dB roll off. Mm -hmm. And also, there's a second switch with three positions that, uh, that addresses the character of the mid range. The bottom position would be called the neutral or natural position. The middle position moves the mid range perceptibly about 10 or 12 inches forward, and the top position. Uh, quite frankly, just based on the materials in that part of the circuit, lends it lends a more warm quality. Mm -hmm. And get a real good look at the value. How tall is it? 47.5 inches. And what does it weigh? It weighs 94 pounds. I understand that these are indeed prototypes, so we have two switches on the back. And uh, what do they do? Okay, the, the same application on the Value FS is what I've uh, drawn from the Prana Fidelity 5090 that allows me, again, two positions for the, the tweeter and the bottom position is that 2 dB roll-off, which the, uh, the human, human ear responds to uh, more um, invitingly, I will say, versus the flat response in most, most conditions. Um, and so the nervous system is not triggered so much. Mm -hmm. The bottom position is for the mid-range character, and you have the uh, bottom position, I refer to neutral or natural, the middle position, which is going to be uh, uh, bring a presence to the mid-range, moving it forward about 10 or 12 inches, and then the top position, which lends itself to a warmth, a quality of warmth to the mid-range. Would the center be a flat position? No, it's no. not necessarily mm. flat. It's really mm. more qualitative mm -hmm. than quantitative. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is definitely quantitative. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is this is all quite measurable. In fact, what I'm doing here, I don't mind saying, is I'm selecting my, among different materials that have a different sonic character, from carbon films, for example, versus a carbon composite, it's two carbon film resistors. That I I'm, see. Okay, I'm, I'm putting in, and I'm selecting versus non-inductive wire wire wounds, and and, uh, and then there's a, a third one. The Vayu FS uses aperiodic bracing. So there's, needless to say, the six walls of the cabinet, and then you have two full-length braces that run the perimeter internally that are staggered front to back to reduce any standing wave activity and maintain the cabinet wall rigidity. And Steve, can you tell us about the electronics? Sure, you bet. So the, the preamplifier is a, um, is a symmetrical balance preamplifier, and like a differential, it's using input through output of two inverted and two non-inverted channels. As a result, I get to take advantage of a balance circuit as a very low noise circuit, and not have to incorporate transformers because it is discrete circuits input through output. Um, How many inputs does it have? It has three, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm able to select between balanced and RCA. These are on tiptoes right now. Mm -hmm. And okay. so there's a front panel switch to select between balanced and, R and RCA. Okay, then the volume pod is it's, uh, beside yeah, it. And it's in a, yeah, as, oppo oops, yeah. as opposed to a, yeah. Uh, yeah. As a pod, it's a, it's, a, it's a discrete attenuator. So there's, there's individual resistors oh, uh, okay. for each, each point on the, on, the, on the volume control. Uh, and below? And below is a, an, an amplifier that uh, I uh, was really surprised to fall in love with. I can't take full credit for it because it is. I do. I do use class D modules in there. Oh, you do. Okay. And I, I, okay. I, I have a. I, I have a different input on it. It also is full balanced on input that I can as well select mm -hmm. between RCA or balanced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it does 400 watts at um, at eight ohms. It'll go down to two ohms at 1200 watts. Mm -hmm. And that's a true specification. So I'm measuring at one kilohertz and one percent distortion for those numbers at 400. 400 watts at 8 ohms at 1 kilohertz at 1% distortion. So that's a, it's, a, it's an honest figure. Good. Let's uh, move along and uh, let's listen to some music. You got it, man. Okay, Dan. <laughs> Thank you. 
exquisite the symbol taps are just effervescent and are very realistically placed over on the right hand side just fantastic congratulations for a great new loudspeaker thank you Peter tell me about uh, tell me about yourself um, well I, I, uh, I started doing the audio uh, projects I suppose I could call them when I was in high school it started as a, a high school science project and um, it was building a three-way loudspeaker and it was also introduced to doing some electronics projects with amplifiers and uh, some preamplifiers, but mostly amplifiers through a gentleman named John Hillig, uh, who is the uh, owner and engineer for musical concepts, musical designs. And, and music. I, uh, you were also a, a partner in, uh, in Edge, if I'm not That's mistaken. Correct. Yeah, I was a co-founder of, of Edge Electronics with mm -hmm. Tom Maker. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that came to an end just a few years ago and uh, started my own company then called Prana Fidelity. Prana Fidelity's goal, from what I've been gathering over the past several years, has been to deliver beautiful sound 
at an affordable cost. I did come up with a little 5090, mm -hmm. and uh, that came out at 3450, and I think it's going to stay at 3950 for a while. You know, all, all things considered, with the the costs and and everything involved, hopefully that'll stay stable for a while. I've heard the 5090 on uh, five occasions at the shows, and it's the most impressive product to me because it delivers the most for the least, and I have the most music for the least financial outlay. It's just, you know, music just has so much to offer people uh, beyond the, the iPod experience and the visceral element of, of being in front of loudspeakers that can um, move air in a way you know, smaller uh, mediums simply won't do, won't, won't do. And the 5090 was, you know, that kind of hopeful invitation to the younger folks. And then there was a, you know, some push or request for a floor stander. And while I refer to the Prana Fidelity 5090 as a symmetrical array, which is correct based upon the crossover topology, it's not what would be defined as a Diapolito, it is a symmetrical array. The new, the Vayu, Vayu in, uh, uh, in, in Sanskrit refers to wind. Vayu is what I would call a quasi-line array. So a, a, okay. a, a true line array is much longer, right? And that your, your, um, your, your front wave coming off is a very long wave that has to contend with what's called comb filtering and then a focal point some distance away, all right? This is not a true line array, but the way that I do wire the speakers helps with that wave front coming as a uniform wave front. You can sit pretty close up and not feel like there's a division of speakers coming at you, but that it's fairly cohesive. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, price point for the Vayu is? Is $69.50 a pair, $6,950 a pair. Mm -hmm. Do you have different vintage options for it? There will be, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, the gentleman that, um, is doing my cabinet work for me in Denver um, is into walnut and usually walnut costs a whole lot more mm -hmm. but he does a lot of retro furniture and in fact he wants me to do a full console stereo with him as a lifestyle product so it's a plug for atomic living designs out of Denver. Mm, how about that? Uh, yeah. Well that's a great story uh, you uh, you surely have passion uh, you, and you also deliver a wonderful, musical, uh, impactful sound that uh, stirs your emotions.